Okay, this video is on how to remove and replace the PTFE tube on the FlashForge Adventure 3. And FlashForge had a video for doing it, but it involves taking the printer apart a lot more than I, I feel is necessary. So I'm going to show you how to do it a little easier way. Uh, the only tool you really need for this is a number two Phillips screwdriver. Um, I do have a magnet handy in case I drop a screw and um, I'm going to use a power screwdriver actually. It makes things a little quicker. First thing you want to do before you do anything else is make sure your printer is shut down, turned off, and completely unplugged. And let me tip the camera up here a little bit so you can see. And what I'm going to do is take this little hatch off. And if you can see, it's a little dark here. Try to shine the light on it. There are two screws. There's a screw right there. I don't want to get it in the way of the camera right there. And there's one right down there where my screwdriver is pointing. Those are the only two screws that we need to take out in order to get the feeder assembly out. And be careful not to drop the screws when you take them out. I did drop one and it landed right here. So that's where the magnet comes in handy to pull it out of there. And then I did at one point drop another one. And that one actually ended up falling all the way down into the printer. If that happens, you got to turn the whole printer upside down and kind of shake it until the magnet falls back or the screw falls back down and ends up in the top and then you can pull it out. So I took those two screws out and the way this is held in, it's held in by the two screws and a tab that goes into a slot on the frame. So you want to grab the filament feeder assembly and kind of work it out. The first time you do it, this one comes out pretty easily. I've taken it in and out a few times. The first time you do it, it's, it's a little bit tight. You got to kind of work it. And then another issue is the stepper motor hits the bracket, the mounting bracket back here. So it takes a little bit to find the actual position for it to come out. There it is. Then you tip it up like this and you can take your stepper motor cable off now. We'll pull it out. Now that's the filament feeder assembly. I'm going to set it down here. I'll tip the camera down. And for this, there are only three screws that have to come out to take this apart. So we got a screw right here. We have one right here. We have one right here. Okay. In the bottom, there is that ceramic um, little filament feeder tube. When you take this apart and take the cap off, watch that that doesn't fall out. It, the first time I did it, it fell out and it rolled right under the workbench, of course. Okay, go ahead and take these screws out. And a little uh, magnetic tray is very handy for keeping your parts from disappearing on you. Okay, so those three are out. I go ahead and take the cover off. And the PTFE tube comes out. And there is my little snap clip. So what you would do is get your new PTFE tube and uh, the, the snap clip is pretty hard to get off the PTFE tube and it kind of damages it sometimes when you're taking it off. So it might be, I, I'd probably think it's a good idea to, if you're replacing your PTFE tube, to replace this little snap ring as well. Um, so that's probably a good idea. And then here is the little ceramic filament guide I was telling you about. That little guy. And it's just loose in there once you take the cover off. So when you're putting it back together, make sure it's there. When you put your snap ring on the new PTFE tube, just put it on a little ways. I mean, I'd probably put it on half the distance that this one is on here. And that's on probably almost a half an inch. So put it on maybe a quarter of an inch. And there's a reason for that is we will slide it in here. There's a little slot where the snap ring goes. And then we'll put the cover on, fasten the cover, and then after you have that, you will push the PTFE tube in as far as it will go, and it will come down and hit the little stop point. So I'm going to go ahead and hold that in there while I put the cover on. And then double checking that my ceramic bead is, or ceramic guide is in there. Okay. 
have my cover on. We'll put the three screws back in. Now I have the clutch on my little power screwdriver here set to put the screws in to just about the right tightness. When you're putting them in by hand, just take them down snug so they hold the cover in place. Don't be cranking down on them or you'll strip them out. If you do strip them out, I haven't done it. I don't know what the proper fix would be, but I would say get some slightly bigger screws um, because that would be better than having to replace the whole unit. So definitely want to be careful with that one. Now we have this on, we got a snap ring in there, and this is when you would push the PTF PTFE tube down. I'm actually not moving it in, my hands are slipping on it, but you'd push it down as far as it will go to make sure it's fully seated. And this one is. All right, now we're gonna put it back together. I'll pull this back forward. And I'm gonna show you. So what we have is on this, there is this tab right here. Okay, that's on the filament feeder. And if we look in here, you see that slot right there, that is where the tab is gonna go into. It's a little tricky to get it in because we have this bracket right here that hits on the stepper motor. So we gotta kind of get it in there and we, we jimmy it around until we find the position that it slides in. So take your PTFE tube, slide it through the hole in the top into the printing chamber, bring it up with the this part of the filament feeder up so you can see the gear, slide that in top. And here you can see now you have access to the stepper motor plug. Go ahead and plug that stepper motor wire in. Go ahead and feed it in. And then what I like to do when I'm putting it in is I'm gonna tip the printer up and I'm gonna look right up through here. And if you look up through here, you can see the slot and the tab and you can line it up to get them into place. So I'm gonna tip it up now and it may go out of frame a little bit, but. And it can definitely, it's gonna take, you know, the first time you do it, it'll take a little bit to get it lined up. I have trouble with it every time. There we go. Okay, I got it lined up. I can set it back down here. I can just kind of work it in the rest of the way. There it is, you see it kind of go in there. And you know it's in because the screw holes right here are lined up, the brackets lined up with the holes where the screws go. But another way to check that you put it in properly is turn the printer around and look through the other side of it I'm going to point down to where it is, that access portal right there. And you can't see it on the camera, but if you look into that little hole there, you will see the black tab of the filament feeder coming through. And that way you know how you have it in all the way. Okay, so we're actually pretty close to being done here. I'm going to go ahead and tip this up though, so you still get a good view of it. And we'll put the screws back in. Now. Again, for this one, a magnetic screwdriver would probably make it easier. Hold the filament feeder with one hand to line up the holes. Put your screws in. Tighten them up snug. Don't over tighten them. They're just going into plastic, so you don't want to strip it out. And if you see it's nice and tight, all back together. We'll go ahead and put our cover hatch on. Oh, that's upside down. <laughs> And then you can plug it back in, turn the power on, and get back to printing.